You're watching Access Minnesota. Here's Jim Dubois. And now back to our interview with Professor Vladis Griescavages. How do our attitudes about money evolve as we age? Uh, can we see a person, for example, change from being a spender to a saver as they grow older? Yeah, it's an interesting question. There are some very predictable changes that happen to us uh, as we age. Uh, think about our risk-taking behavior. So you can take lots of risks with money. People by far take the most risks in their late teenage years, their early 20s years. From a biological perspective, these are the mating years. These are the years when our testosterone levels are highest because they're pushing us to take more risks to climb up social hierarchies, to impress the opposite sex. So if you give dollars to 20-year-old males, they're going to take the most risk with them. In fact, a lot of entrepreneurs start out in that age range because they're willing to sacrifice everything to take the risk to start their own business. As we age, as we get a little bit older, our testosterone levels decrease. And taking that risk just doesn't look as good anymore. So, you, ooh, I don't know. Maybe we should hold on to this instead of risk everything. Uh, I actually watch uh, poker on TV sometimes. Um, my wife can't stand that I watch poker. But there's a pattern that I see year after year where there's this one gigantic poker tournament that's played out in Las Vegas every year. It's the world championship of poker. That 9,000 people show up, pay $10,000 a piece to be part of this giant tournament. And the winner gets $9 million. How old are the people who win this tournament? The last five winners have all been between 22 and 25 years old. All kinds of people enter, but only a few of them win. And almost all of them are the people who are willing to take the largest risks to get that largest reward. Well, given that uh, biological fact that our testosterone levels decrease as we age, in one respect, that, that's a good thing. Perhaps we're nearing retirement. We are less likely to take uh, risks with our investments. But is there a, a potentially downside to this as well? If you think about this, are we less likely to be innovative? Are we less likely to take risks in our own business? Do we have to be cognizant of the fact that biologically we may be less prone to take these risks? Should we think about that and, and say, you know, okay, biology is telling me one thing, but I've had pretty good success as an innovator, so maybe I, I should take this risk after all. What do you think about that? Well, it's very interesting. When some of these studies started coming out about testosterone leading people to take more risks and actually leading, say, people who work in the stock exchange to be more successful in their trades because they're taking more risk, first thing that you saw started happening is lots of doctors started receiving calls from men in their 30s and 40s who wanted injections of testosterone. Said, I can't compete, I need to be more confident, I need to take risks. And their drug of choice, it wasn't cocaine, it wasn't heroin, it was testosterone. In fact, now you see ads on TV where you can rub testosterone on yourself, uh, which will lead you to take more risks. But there's a reason why Mother Nature made us take less risk as we grow older. As we grow older, we are more likely to have children. And if we take risks, risks are inherently risky. You don't just lose your money, you can die. Risk is the same thing that leads you to go bungee jumping, to go spelunking into bottomless holes. And if parents die, the kids don't do so well, and they've especially done poorly over evolutionary history, your book explores reasons for hypocritical behavior. Why does evolution drive us towards certain inconsistencies in our lives? Well, people, it's long been thought, so when I was an undergrad, when I was taking my economics classes, I was taught that people are consistent. They're logical, rational, and our preferences are consistent. If you're going to have cream in your coffee today, you're going to have cream in your coffee tomorrow because you like cream and you're going to behave consistently. But what we found later on, so in graduate school, what I learned is when we actually look at people's behavior, they're often inconsistent. One day, you follow the crowd. You do something that's really popular. Another day, you do something that's exactly the opposite. You don't want to be doing the same thing that everybody else is doing. From a classic perspective, people look like hypocrites. But there's a deeper logic 
to what looks like hypocrisy. Yes, people are inconsistent, but we are inconsistent by design. We're predictably inconsistent. And the way you can make sense of this is think about you following different evolutionary goals. Sometimes your goal is to be safe. Sometimes your goal is to attract a mate, like those guys with the peacocks. Sometimes your goal is to climb up the status hierarchy. Sometimes your goal is to care for your kids, as when you get older in age. What's rational when you're following one goal is not the same thing as rational when you're following another goal. Sometimes you want to stand out, like when you want to attract a mate. Other times you want to fit in, such as when you want to avoid a predator and you want to blend into the crowd. So what at the surface looks like a bunch of inconsistency and sometimes even hypocrisy follows a very rational logic once you understand the drivers of people's behavior. How do marketers and advertisers use this evolutionary, these evolutionary trends to help determine their message to consumers? Well, marketers are our savvy folks. Their job depends on selling people stuff and making sure that people buy it because if you don't buy it, I don't get to feed my children as, as a marketer. So what marketers know is they know what drives people's behavior. They know the importance of these evolutionary goals, and they tailor messages to try to evoke these goals. So think about something like a car. Rarely will you see a car ad that says, my model, Model S, is good at getting you from point A to point B. Right? That's really the, the function of a car. It's supposed to get you from point A to point B. Well, where are those ads that tell us these things? The reason that the ads don't tell us that is because marketers are aiming things towards these evolutionary goals. Cars can be exotic, erotic play toys. They can be these beautiful figures. They can be safe houses for our family. They can be places to hang out with our friends. They can be status symbols. And that's where the value of products comes from, is not from a car's function to get you from point A to point B but from all these other evolutionary needs that it can help you meet. How has writing this book and doing research in general made you more aware of your own decision-making process? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I actually teach a class on persuasion, which is the psychology of how you change people's behaviors, how you persuade them to do one thing over another. And what I found is I understand all the techniques that are being used. They're constantly being used on me all the time. In fact, my students in my class are often trying to use them on me. And even though I understand what's going on, I still fall prey, fall victim to these techniques. And the reason is that these techniques are fundamental to who we are. You wouldn't be human if you weren't susceptible to these techniques. So unless you're always on the lookout for them and always defensive, saying, no, 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 this, you're trying to trick me right now, us humans are naturally susceptible to these techniques. And advertisers know how to unlock our psychology and get us to lower our defenses. And that's partly why they're so effective. How much does advertising seep into our subconscious mind? When Access Minnesota returns, we'll discuss ways advertising can manipulate certain evolutionary traits. Access Minnesota will return after these messages.